All right. So here we go again. Our next speaker is uh, Gaurav Mishra. Uh, he is the director uh, of a region, uh, the digital experience at, uh, sorry, he's the director of the digital experience at Sregion. And uh, he has over 13 years uh, of experience uh, with the digital experience when it comes to enterprise. And this is uh, globally. So uh, here he is, uh, and he is going to go ahead and talk to us about the digital experience, the future of digital experience, and uh, uh, multi-experience marketing. So without further ado, uh, here is uh, Gaurav. Thanks, Glenn, for a wonderful yep. uh, induction. Yep. Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, so let me know when you can see my screen. Okay. Yes. You can? Okay, wonderful. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, so glad to be here, guys. Uh, you know, thanks for joining in. Um, you know, before we before we jump on, so you know, as Roland said, the talk is about future of digital experiences. We're going to talk about, you know, you know, some some case studies, you know, on on you know how other brands are doing multi-experience marketing. We'll deep dive in on saying that you know what are the different basics that you have to cover in looking at, uh, you know, multi-experience marketing. We'll talk about three four tactical things that you should look at, uh, you know, while you're looking at building this multi-experience marketing. And then, uh, you know, we'll do a recap. So, you know, that's pretty much. Uh, feel free to jump in questions, you know, and share it. Uh, and any any questions that you might have, and we'll take that after the uh, the talk, the session, right? Uh, before we jump in, you know, a quick, you know, uh, shout out of my Twitter handle. You know, I am at G Mishra, God of Mishra, G Mishra, you know, on Twitter. If you want to connect me on LinkedIn, it's again gmisha.com. And the slides are you know, available on bit.ly, DXP, MEM, MEM for multi-experience marketing. So you, know, uh, you can refer to that slide any point of time. Here we go. So as I said, right, let's, let's start with always start with some success stories. You know, where, where is the proof of the pudding of you know, who is doing a good job at multi-experience marketing, right? And, and one of my favorite one that I always talk about is Disney, right? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you hear about, heard about Disney Magic Band. It's a it's a wearable device that Disney, um, you know, gives to people who you know visits Disney, uh, you know, parks, the the theme parks, and uh, you know, your entire Disney experience is essentially tied up to this Magic Band and uh, your Disney app, essentially, right? And you know, the band gives you, you know, allows you to pay allows you to access rights, unlock rooms, and things like that. And you know what it does is that it you know gives you a, I mean it, because it it helps you for that entire journey. You can do a lot of personalized recommendations and you know do upsells on the because I like this ride. You know I, I went for this ride. You know I might like this two other rides as well, right? If you know you know for my previous trips, these are the kind of things that I like from a uh, from from a Disney character's point of view. Here is something that I can go in for a new, uh, you know, place that you know Disney launched, right? Things like that. So you can do a lot of personalized recommendations on the basis of what person actually did last time they visited Disney or what they are doing right now, right? So very, you know, nice touch on this is on your app, your web uh, website, and your you know wearable device, right? Uh, and and you know even devices which are spread across the Disney uh, land, if you will. That's one of my favorite stories, actually, uh, from a multi-experience marketing. Uh, another one is Timberland, right? That's 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 really a really nice one because they use something called near field tech, near field technology, something that you use for your you know Google Pay or Apple Pay with your watch, uh, you know, uh, you know globally. And what it does is that you know, if so once you walk in the stores, you really don't need to talk to any store clerks. You can just you know take a device which is right there for everybody to you know pick one. And then go across each of the products, right? Uh, you know, images, and just you know, scan it, or you know, just put it there. Not even scan it, but just put it there, and it will tell you everything about that particular product. You know, what it's good for, what are the benefits, you know, styles, and you know, all these things. And as you go along and look at each of the products, what it keeps on doing is it keeps on creating a personalized journey, right? And it gives you recommendations, right? saying that hey, you know, you like this boot. You know, why don't you like this jacket as well, right? Uh, you know, and, and things like that. You know, extremely, you know, you know, multi-experience, right? So it takes your online history, 
it takes the history that you have right now uh, you know on when you when you're looking at different products and give you a personal recommendation right and you know an, along the lines you can do coupons you can do promotions you can do you know any any other you know campaigns if you want to right for across specific sku which you might want to you know work about so that's a, that's a really nice personalized in store experience uh, uh, case study uh, you know that that i liked you know another one is oss right so and then in retail and what oss does is uh, you know one of the, all these case studies are unique right so while disney was you know very customer centric you know people you know uh, b2c centric and timberland was more retail you know in the store experiences what oss does is that you know oss you know allows the the frontline workers to you know have you know you have you know so if you are walking in and you are looking at buying something and you don't really you know like the color or you want a different color or different size right you can just ask the frontline worker and they can right there and find out and tell you where you know exactly the particular uh, you know div- uh, the particular product or particular you know cloth is there in which store even if they don't find that in the store they can actually buy you know that particular product for you right there right and actually ship you to to your home right so your entire online and offline journey gets just very well and what you do is that you know you are not you know so all your frontline workers they are not really stuck but they are actually helping you know people to you know get the exact uh, product they want right exact clothes they want really really powerful case study you know another one rei you know you know anybody who's done camping knows about it and they've done you know very well the uh, entire you know omni channel to omni channel experience right so if you see an ad on the on 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 a magazine right you go in you know and you know, just talk, just look at the scan that particular uh, product, uh, qr code you'll see that you know uh, the same information same you know coupons you know which you know, essentially you got triggered by that particular coupon code when you walk in the store right this is on you know your you know your phone number and your user id you can actually you know get the same you know benefit from that particular coupon that you saw in 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 that magazine right which you scanned in and went to the website so they have really a seamless offline to online channel uh, communication right and what it does is that it gives a very very streamlined customer experience right and you have your journey mapped in you know from your online to your offline you know to the store all that experience right a very true omni channel experience and, and they've been i mean they have a cult following literally right right now and and, and one of the reasons is actually their you know digital footprint and a and a you know and, and a seamless experience that they give to the to the to the customers another one interesting one opt aptos you know this is not really heard of a lot of places but what they've done is that they they their target uh, audience is 50 plus people right uh, you know age of 50 plus and what they they do is that they know that you know they are not the the best people for if you look at you know technology but they really want to know about it for sure and what they do is that you know they have uh, you know devices which is you know in you know with the frontline worker and what they do is that they don't really uh, you know ask people to work on that devices on their own but it helps the frontline workers to essentially you know capture all the information and ensure that you know they you know and it it gives triggers and says that hey tell anna about the promos that we are running tell you know uh, this person that you know what is the different things that they can buy right so it's a very intuitive interface and a true social crm if you will to manage that entire customer experience for that particular 50 plus person coming in and you know uh, and, and and buying into the store and you know one of the ones you know that you know that was really successful a contextual experience marketing uh, where you know the for talks of what they did is that you know they, they there was a you know fashion show happening right and you know whenever anybody was tweeting anything you know with lfw hashtag lfw and 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 a particular um, you know uh, cloth right uh, immediately the billboards were picking that cloth up rem- running it with an image you know algorithm and finding the exact match in the top shop shop and say that hey you know this is the lamp walk cloth why don't you go ahead and buy a similar cloth from our shop right and all these billboards were you know rightly placed near you know 10 minutes uh, you know 10 minutes walk from the store right so you can actually literally walk to the store and buy that or you can you know buy online right you were literally you know there were online options to buy as well and that was a very very good experience you know from a contextual experience marketing very well known case study because what they did is that they you know at that particular context at that particular time you know when when there is a you know you know a fashion week going on 
you know you are everybody knows about it because there are literally you know campaign going around and you go in and you buy the uh, buy what is cool right from a, from from a, from a, from the fashion week so that's a that's a very good experience uh, you know as well from a contextual experience marketing and uh, sorry it's got hand and one of my favorite ones um, is mcdonald's so i started with one one of my favorite ones and now i'm ending the case study from one of my favorite ones as, as well is mcdonald's you know we we call them the king of turnkey business you know a lot of times and you know they have recently acquired a, a voice technology company as well where you know um, you know which which is enabling all these kiosks that you see in mcdonald's stores to essentially go in and buy and what they're doing is that they are you know very aggressively you know uh, ensuring that you know more and more robots are essentially are, are doing the ordering process right and not the not the frontline workers and so with voice with kiosks and you know and, and you know what happens is that you know as soon as you go in and you punch in your phone number you know you'll get a complete experience a different experience right you know you have personalized offers you have personalized uh, you know uh, recommendations you have personalized uh, you know uh, you know uh, things that you would like right like for example last time you you know looked at uh, you know this particular burger and you know why don't you you know you bought an ice ice cream so hey you know why don't you i'll i'll show you an ice cream and a and a burger combo this time right so a very personalized experience right so and 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 they're so aggressive if you ever walk into any mcdonald store you know much more in europe and you know now in in us as well you'll see that you know they have kiosks that you know does the entire ordering system more and more uh, you know in, in the front line so that's that's one of the you know very good example of how do you you know work and you know do marketing on to you know multiple touch points or multiple channels right if you will right and you know a, a quick video that i'll not play it you know in the interest of a time but you can literally look into this you know l'oreal you know uh, you know really got a lot of benefits from investing into voice as a channel which is not mobile not web you know channel that we know which which i'm trying to focus today um, and and they have really you know paved the path for a lot of organization to come in so as earlier in the three stock we were saying you know a lot of time you know when these large companies you know you know give a proof of pudding if you will um you know you you can essentially take that recommendation and go in and talk about other side so you know there are other companies which are using these channels very effectively right l'oreal is a good example and you know when we should start before we jump in about and talking about a little you know on on how do we do it and what do we essentially focus on in the first basic step so right now you know 55% of the gen z right the new generation coming in like and 41% of you know adults are usually globally you know using voice search and gartner reported this in 2019 uh, when when are these people so 61% are you know using it when their hands and vision are occupied and right? when they are in the kitchen when in in a in in a in a bedroom right a lot of time all this you know voice devices are being used there right you know and you know and and one of the main reasons that people use it because of they want fast results right they want to Results. You don't want to go in, you know, look at the laptop or look in the mobile to essentially get the results in. But when you want the quick and fast stuff, which is what Gen Z is looking at, you know, you look at the voice search. And you know, right now, as, as and I focus a lot on Gen Z because that's the next, uh, you know, you know, generation coming in, uh, and that they are paving the way that you know technology is being consumed. And you know, one of the reports said, you know, uh, in 2018, that the Gen Z is actually looking at um you know personalized quality timely content in 7 seconds and that's a very very interesting um you know number if you will right because if you don't have you know if you can't capture the whole imagination of your customer in that 7 seconds generally they lose it right they will they will you know just get distracted and move to something else so whatever you do is and how do you you know in this multiple channels and this you know variables in this you know voice uh digital displays mirrors how do you essentially capture this you know uh, you know this this whole experience in 7 seconds is 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 essentially essentially the key um and not only the b2c right so we yes we we have talked about a lot of b2c but even b2b is you know getting distracted right um and a lot, lot of b2b sellers recognize that things like wearable computing especially in you know distribution centers right uh, pricing optimization so a lot of things you know recommendation and personalization is actually one of the big big uh, you know key areas that they are actually you know focusing on you know even in the b2b segment so 
it's not only B2C that's getting disrupted, right? It's B2B which is getting disrupted as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of information for sure, um, right? Um, but but you know, but yeah, let's let's deep dive in and let's not panic and think that okay, yes, there's a lot of happening, but how do we do it? So what exactly you should look at first? You know, look at you know some tactical things that you can take away from the presentation today uh, that you can work on. Um, you know, after the talk and actually get results, right? So let's let's look at that. Um, as I jump in, feel free to ask any questions. You know, on the slides, our uh, slides, I believe. You know, that was the one. Um, you know, and we'll take that questions uh, post uh, session. So you know, before we jump in, right, we need to understand, and this is a very key. You know, challenge that you know people have sometimes. You know, marketers at least you know who are getting into this. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, coming in, uh, you know, they they always look at this is a multi-channel marketing, right? Look at different channels and say that okay, you know, I'm doing this three channels. Let me, you know, what do I do in these two channels? And actually, that doesn't work, right? You know, and you know, historically that hasn't worked. What you have to look at is you have to really look at omni-channel and not multi-channel. And what that means is that rather than you know looking at your customer and saying that what they are doing in different channels. Look at the customer and you know map their entire journey across different channels, right? And 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 then look at different touch points. So not really pushing massive messages on different channels to a persona, but looking at a customer and saying that what that customer experience looks like across all these different channels, right? Uh, and and go omni-channel essentially, not multi-channel, uh, right? So what are the different multi-experience, you know, uh, or you know omni-channel touch points are, right? So you know, you know, uh, you know Alexa. You know, voice devices, which we call zero-dimensional, uh, you know, devices, touch points. Then you have 2D, you know, screens, right, which is, you know, uh, you know, laptop, mobile, and things like that. Then you have large 2D screens like digital displays. You uh, and you know, and then you have 3D, right, which is like wearables, so your watch, your, you know, your, you know, sensory, where you can hear, you can, you know, speak, and you can actually, you know, you know, see as well. And you every 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 you know touch points essentially have different uh, you know uh, uh, sensory organs, right? So you so a lot of things essentially you do via voice. So voice is one common factor in across all of the you know touch points, right? But in a lot of places you are also doing touch, right? In either it's a screen touch or it's a you know or, or a digital display touch or there is sometimes controller, but you know and and sometimes there is you know uh, you know other things like you know walking in accelerometer and things like that. But voice is one common experience touch point that you have to work at, and and that's that becomes a very first my suggestion or from a tactical point of view. So one of the reasons that we talked about voice in earlier slides is you know if you really want to go beyond the channels of you know web and mobile and say that what is the next one channel that I should look at, I suggest very strongly look at voice because voice is one common channel that is essentially gonna uh, become a big part of the. And is becoming a big, big part of the consumption, you know, globally, you know, across different, uh, you know, touch points, especially with the people who are coming to the web new, right? So the next billion users in India, or you know, the the users in you know, Africa, they are big time the consumers of voice, right? And and so the more and more Gen Z are coming in, the more and more people who are essentially now knowing technology would be very very comfortable with voice. Not our generation, but the the new generation coming in. Right, and and as I said earlier, right, cover the entire journey, right? Cover it uh, and say that you know if you have a happy hour campaign running in, you know how your happy hour campaign essentially gets you know consume your content from your Alexa. How do you essentially take that you know experience onto your when a person logs in, checks in into your mobile app, when he goes into the portal, right? Uh, when he, when you drop off, you know how do you, how does you see the that information on your TV screen or your you know screen in the room portal? Right, so you cover the entire journey, and that's important, right? So look at omni-channel, two omni-channel, not multi-channel, right? And once you have mapped the entire journey onto across all different channels, you'll be able to figure out that what exactly are the way that you have to run different campaigns uh, across different touch points. We have five minutes left, so we'll uh, we'll go a little quick, and then maybe we can come in, you know, in questions that anybody has on any specific talk or topics. Um, you know, one I uh, again uh, a very nice video. I'll not play it right now uh, in the interest of time, uh, but definitely go ahead, look into the my slides. It's it's a very nice way of you know capturing on how different states, and that's a very important piece, right? That that when you when you are mapping this entire 
uh, you know, customer experience journey, ensure that you capture each and every state and capture it either inside your Motic, uh, you know, you know, profile, or you capture in some kind of a CDP, like a you know me or a you know Acquia CDP, um, you know, but some kind of a CDP, so that you know that what is exactly happening across different touch, uh, you know, uh, you know, channels, and real time give information back right to the, all these channels so that they can pass the journey, right? So, and we'll we'll quickly talk about you know what what's what's required for that in the later later as well. Um, so we talked about the voice, you know, we talked about the multiple touch points, you know, that you should look at. Uh, but when you're looking at voice, what does it mean? Where, where do you start looking at, right? You know, should you like start looking at campaigns or you start looking at content? My always advice is start looking at your content first. Because right now, what happened is that, you know, building great content is extremely expensive and difficult and it takes time, right? And, you know, a lot of time, you know, the first timers do mistake when they look at, you know, either digital display content or a content for voice or for wearables that they try and say that, okay, I have this content that works for me in the web and mobile, but I'm gonna go ahead and because it's a new channel, I'm gonna create a different content for it. It doesn't work, it doesn't scale, right? And that's why what you have to do is that you have to look at your content strategy right now, holistically, and say that, you know, what my content strategy can be that so that, you know, it can actually uh, scale to wearable, digital displays, mirrors, smartwatches, any appliances, anything in the future, right? And start building it right now because it takes time. So, you know, when you, when you start defining your content strategy today, it's gonna affect you five years down the line. So look at a five years horizon and say how my content strategy would look like, you know, for all these different devices, all these different channels five years from now, right? And how do you do it, right? So, you you know, right now when web, uh, you know, based content, right, uh, you know, has really spoiled us, to be honest. Uh, because it, you know, it's a very high verbosity. It's very visual. You can literally scroll towards a, to a, you know, to a 2000 article, 2000 words article, and you can still get the gist of it. Right. And we have got so used to it that we really don't really worry about the, what is the context of this content? Right. You know, it's a, it's a very, you can essentially go in from one page to another via hyperlinks. And there's a, there's a whole complex information architecture is there. Right. So we really don't worry about the context. Right. We talk about a lot of things with, use fluffy words and use a lot of marketing words. But, you know, more and more as we are going to the future, you know, all these different devices, the content has to be extremely contextual, right? And it's a very easy way to do it. It looks very complex, but it's, it's extremely easy or to just do some changes. And I'll take an example later on uh, in from a content point of view, but ensure that, you know, whatever you are doing has a conversational legibility of it. That, you know, anybody can understand that content without you know, essentially understanding that where the context is, what the context was. So the context should be inside the content itself, right? And, and I'll take an example. So this is, uh, you know, a, a case study that Acquia, you know, worked on, you know, with Georgia Goff. And, you know, this particular FAQ, right, which is kind of a holy grail of this, you know, voice world, you know, question and answers. You know, what was there is that, you know, on the benefits, on your employment benefits page, you had an FAQ, which says, how long can I receive benefits? Now for a visual person, you know, just looking at the web-based, uh, you know, content, you know, it's a very obvious thing because I'm on an employment benefits page. That, so that means that, you know, this particular content is talking about employment benefits. But when you take this content and display it to somebody or, or serve it to a, any other channel or a wearable or a voice or a digital display, then the context is lost because you're not on a web page. You're not on a URL anymore, right? And that's where you have to have the entire context. They'll search, come in, you know, this particular question is actually talking about employment benefits, right? So that's a small change, but you know, it's it's a very important change from a content strategy point of view to ensure you have the right context in that particular content. And the example is that, uh, you know, you know, hyperlinks, right? Where you say learn more about payments. Now, when when you know that on your visual screen where you are clicking, okay, makes sense. But when you are receiving this content onto, let's say, a screen, a digital screen, digital display, or a voice, you know, you can't click, right? You, there is nothing, nothing really to, no way to click. So ensure that, you know, you are not creating all these content mistakes when you're creating content, but, you know, have the content something like this, where you hyperlink, you know, receive payments, right? Which is a contextual information so that, you know, when it's serving on the web, you can click it, but it's not serving on the web. You can still hear it and understand that there is nothing called learn more about payments, right? Because it would not make sense on 
voice or you know other 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 channels again i'm running out of time so you know going you know again uh, as i said context specific content so ensure that in 7 seconds right you you know you give the entire context of what that content is <clears throat> and go back and change that content strategy you know accordingly right we can we, you know there 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 is a, there's a lot of information around that you know and you can go if you google it context content 7 seconds you'll, you'll get a lot of information around that as well and then so you know so content so we we started from you know saying that okay voice and all these variable channels are becoming important we move to a content strategy and say that okay what you should do from a content strategy so that it becomes contextual or let's move to the third part now what is what what do you need to do that right so yes context is important but how do you give context so you give context by using structured content right more and more structured content and you know and you know a lot of a lot, a lot of interesting things is happening so i'm i know i'm sure that you know everybody knows about google actions uh, you know and alexa which are the you know the voice you know uh, you know uh, applications if you will uh, where uh, you know all the applications are residing and what google is doing is google is actually taking your schema of your you know of you know content which is you know defined in a schema on your website they are taking that schema definitions and translating it to google actions automatically so if your consumer is coming in and they are asking a question to the google assistant right a particular about a particular brand or a particular you know use case that you solve and and if you have the right schema implemented on your website there is a good chance that google will actually pull out the in, information from your site and serve it to the customer and that's a very important uh, you know way of or, or or a very very literally a gold mine right i mean i literally say gold mine right schema because you know you they, you don't have to do anything else you just have to ensure that your right now the content that you're building is structured enough to fit into a schema define that schema on your you know in a in an xml format and have that on the website so that google can come in and actually start serving into voice onto you know uh, you know this is a, this is an example of hubnest digital displays and you know you you have the future proof content right so a very you know go back so one thing if you really want to do one tactical thing if you want to take away from the presentation today go back look at your content find out schema you know go back to schema.org find the corresponding schema that matches your content and ensure that you have all the content fields map to a schema field and 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 stay right it's it's extremely important um you know one one example is nyt the new york times uh, cooking right they 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 literally had you know um you know fields you know literally form fields with more than 50 fields which they were putting to you know for you know uh, you know thousands and thousands of recipes you know over the past of many many years right uh, it's about 8 10 years now since they've been doing that and what they what happened with that is that because they were creating such a structured content from a recipes point of view new york times is right now if you google and you know there's a good chance that you know you you will land up to a new york times cooking uh, recipe and they've done made tons of money and they literally became a vertical search engine uh, you know for 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 cooking recipes right so that's a very powerful case study you know for from from new york times on saying how do you can use your structured content and drive traffic and drive interest you know for for your particular business um and and remember right so the, what what happens with context right so yes you have defined your content on the uh, context in the content and the way that you have done is that you know you have put in schema at all or structured content but what happens is that you know once you have the context in place you can very very easily uh, right define you know and run personalization campaigns across this because you every content element is essentially tied up with the context and you know that for which kind of person for what benefits for what kind of uh, you know uh, things that he like or don't like you know is essentially uh, important for that particular personalization journey right not a lot of times all this personalization uh, journeys are failing is because you know we have done a terrible job in our content building or content strategy so many years that right now we are very very dependent on ai to really understand what is the context of that content and 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 ai not always does the best job right and that's why we we put all these recommendation engines and client says hey it doesn't you know it's not helping it's not giving you the right conversions and thing like that but what you have to understand is that you have to uh, you know uh, give enough context in the context and as a marketer one of the right now the the important job us to is to go back look at the content strategy and show that it's structured enough 
right? And you know, have the right context in the content so that we can run personalization journeys. Because then it, the whole job of AI engines, the whole job of uh, you know, um, you know, Google, everybody, you know, uh, life become easier, and you can actually run very effective personalization engines. And one of the important you know, part of this is to have some kind of a customer data platform, right, uh, available. I mean, technology has come to a place where it's not that difficult to have a customer data platform in place, right? You have, you know me, you have Appio CDP, you have Segment, um, which recently got acquired by Twilio, uh, and, and, and it's pretty robust for you to essentially, you know, you know, tie up your different channels, tie up your different touch points, right? And essentially bring a, create a general, uh, a central profile of the user on which you can map your entire journey, right? Entire segmentation, uh, you know, journey. So if you have different segmentation in your customer data platform, you can look at that segmentation and then say, okay, how do I use the segmentation um, from a journey point of view on web, on mobile, on wearable, on digital display, on voice, and, and so on and so on. So customer data platform essentially becomes an extremely important part because now you are, your content is fragmented onto 10 different places. You don't you know, want to essentially have silos you know, you know, start getting built up as well. Um, so that's the end of the presentation. We are five minutes above, but I'll do a quick recap. Um, right? Think omni-channel, not multi-channel. Right? So think as you know, uh, uh, think as a there's a customer, it's a central uh, you know idea, and look at all different touch points across all different you know uh, you know different experiences, and say that how you can you know run a campaign or how you can then you know define a journey. Or an experience across different touch points, you know, on that particular journey, right? And don't look at channels in silos, if you will. So look at omni-channel, not multi-channel, right? Build content with context, very, very important, right? In the future, context will precede content, right? Content, you know, will not be that important. Context would be extremely important. So think context, think, you know, structured content, right? Uh, and remember seven seconds, right? Seven seconds is the key. If you're not able to Communicate that context in seven seconds. There is a good chance that you have to go back and look at the context again, right? So build your content strategy in a way that you know in seven seconds you're able to define and understand what that context is, right? And you know if you're looking at the first battle that you want to you know win and at least battle or you know uh, fight if you will, then look at the recipes or you know on this structured schemas, right? Example that I took the recipe example. Go back to schema.org. Look at you know different schemas that might fit your business, and go ahead and implement that particular schema, you know for your uh, for your website because that's the straightforward you know implementation, and it's literally a gold mine right now. Uh, you know if you look at Google or if you look at the personalization journeys, and you know lastly maintain states right. Uh, you know one of the important part of my you know which I talked about earlier in your my case study is that. It's very important to maintain states. So if you look at a, uh, you know, uh, an offer on, 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 a, on a, in a magazine, and then you're walking into a store, and then you're buying something online, it's very important to have the states updated. That what you did on the magazine, what you did on the digital displays, uh, what is the, you know, that did when you, what you did at when you when you were in the store, and what you did when you were online. Right? So make sure that you're maintaining states, and you're, you know, capturing all these states all this information inside a customer data platform so that you can create personalized journey for you know uh, increasing your conversions so that's a talk you know fire one uh, we're still 10 minutes away but you know again yeah, you know you can find me on jimisha at twitter uh, jimisha.com on linkedin right and here's the slides link would love to you know i always love to talk about this topic uh, so you know, we can talk on length on this topic at any point of time on any of these channels. So with that, I'll stop the screen and back to you. Roland. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Gaurav. Uh, thank you for the, for the presentation. That was... Uh, a lot of information and uh <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they you know uh digest and then uh hopefully take uh, a lot of uh tips out of it uh, yeah. we haven't get any question yet so let's uh 
I'll wait a few minutes and see if folks, maybe folks are typing in the questions and uh, I know uh, sometimes technology is, does not want to be on our side sometime, but. Uh, sure, sure. And, and, and you rightly said that, you know, there was a lot of information, right? I was actually <laughs> in, in two minds that, you know, how much information I can give in uh, because we want to, you know, set the context and give as much as value. Uh, sure. But hopefully, sure. you know, people can sure. uh, look at the slides and, you know, consume it much. Yes. But and again, you know, I'm always available, I'm pretty active online. So you can always catch me up on Twitter, LinkedIn, and any places and have a conversation around this topic. Yes, definitely. But let me let me go back again once uh, on uh, the very first point that you have in the recap when you talk about uh, thinking omni-channel and not uh, multi-channel. Uh, mm -hmm. So basically, uh, if I understand it correctly, the future of the digital experience, uh, the way you presented it is that uh, marketer need to go or need to think omnichannel rather than the multi-channel, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, okay, so do you think that in your experience uh, uh, in the past, basically, uh, marketer try to, uh, I mean, take on all, I mean, not all, but uh, several channels at the time? Is that is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, and what happens is that you know because you you know a lot of time what happens is that you know web and mobile are the two different two channels that are you know well abused I would say, right? Okay. And uh, you know they most of the marketers keep on you know hitting the same channels because it's working and, and there's so much going on that when you start looking at the at the third channel or the fourth channel, uh, what you do is that you don't really look at that holistically, right? And you say, okay, I am running, you know, uh, you know, a campaign of email campaign, or I'm running a, you know, SMS campaign. Let me do. If I want to do something on voice, let me just, you know, create an Alexa app and be done with it. It doesn't work like that, right? So what happens is that, you know, it, it I mean, it, in the past, with our experience working with different clients, it hasn't worked. What you have to do is that you have to look at all the channels, right? So somebody once comes in, signs in, uh, or sign up. What is the email that you sent in? Right? How do you send that first SMS? Right, and then when a person, you know, how does it interact with a, a wearable device? How it interacts with the digital display when he walks in, you know, in the store, and then how it interacts with the that you know that first time experience, you know, happens, you know, from a voice point of view, right? So you know you have to you know look at these journeys and then look at different touch points and different channels, right? And and it and what happens is that first of all it will not overwhelm you because you don't have to do everything, you know, in all first go. Right, and and all those helps is that because then you are able to actually maximize your conversions on across different channels, right? Uh, in that entire journey, because then you can say that okay, this is my experience that looks like from different touch points in this entire journey across these different channels, rather than going in and saying that I am doing these ten things in one channel, another twenty things in another channel, and then let me do ten more things in the third channel. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. Right? So you have to ensure that you have one different, one seamless experience across all channels and, and mcdonald's is a, is a pretty 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 good example of that you know more and more you know if you you know if anybody wants to learn you know how the you know the enterprises are actually using this different experiences you know not not a better example than mcdonald's right they, they've been really investing in that okay okay yeah well still no questions let me check one more time here Yes, uh, I guess. Uh... I can see some people, you know, asking for the access. I should have make it public earlier. I forgot to make it public, but oh. at least people, <laughs> the people are access actually at least questions. No, not not access. No, no, the access of the presentation. Oh, oh, the presentation. Um, yeah. Well, um, this has been um, uh, recorded, so uh, we probably somehow will make it available for all attendees. So, oh, uh, wonderful. They definitely will be able to uh, revisit all this thing. I mean, we, we it's 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 pretty um, 
uh, we thought about it because we have six different tracks going on at the same time. So uh, nobody could be able to attend uh, two different presentations at the same time. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's gonna be nearly, it's definitely impossible. But, uh, yeah, and I just made the made the you know the sh the visibility of that slides open okay. to public. So mm -hmm. nobody wants to, nobody needs to then, you know, go back and ask for the sharing permissions from the board. So okay. sorry for that. My, my bad. I should have done that earlier. No, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see what we got here. Let me check one more time. I know we do have a few people um, in, this tra in the track right now. Probably a couple dozen. Uh, let me see here. Yep. All right, so. I guess uh, there's uh, no question. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah. Good to. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, um, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're, we're on. Yeah.